Welcome to Cisco Unboxed. I'm Dan Stewart, an engineer here at our Inger Micro Business Transformation Center. Today, we're going to be taking a look at the Cisco 9800 series wireless LAN controller. This wireless LAN controller model I have in front of me here specifically is the 9800L edition. This one is more of the compact series model of the 9800 family of appliances. With this model, we do have a couple features we want to highlight and then look at a comparison between this and the prior generation 3504. With this specific model, we have the variant that is all copper interfaces. There is a different model that does have two uplink ports that are available with fiber SFP interfaces. Every Cisco 9800L will have the four multi-gigabit interfaces, two higher speed up to 10 gigabit per second interfaces, along with service port, redundancy port, and console interfaces as well. If we take a look behind, here we can see that there is no internal power supply. It does rely on the external power connector to go to a power brick that will be used to power this within an installation. This one does actually have no other protruding elements from this like we might see in the 3504, uh, which does keep um, the fan inside this wireless controller, keeping the appliance nice and cool. Uh, where if we look at this model, in comparison to the prior generation, here we have the 3504. This generation runs the AeroS software, where the new Catalyst controller does run the Catalyst iOS XE software. By comparison, if we look just at their appliance heights, they're almost the exact same. Very similar in total um, size across the board, but we will notice at the back of the 3504, we do have these heat sink fins. So one difference between these two controllers is that the 9800 series L does not have any heat sinks off the back because it is, it is cooled by an active fan. Whereas this is a cooled by a, a passive cooling using just the heat sinks and radiators off of it. When we had these running in our lab, we found that the 9800L was a little bit louder because the fan was em emanating some noise out of the controller, whereas the 3504 is a silent model because everything is passive within the device. One thing we also noticed was that with the fan in the 9800, we did find that the device ran much cooler uh, by comparison to the passive only 3504 that did run to the touch much warmer by comparison. So these two models are very similar in their physical form and function. Um, but one other difference we noticed as well, if you take the 9800L, all the interfaces uh, are capable, in this case, of multi-gigabit connectivity, but none of these are PoE capable. Whereas on the 3504, you do have two interfaces that are PoE capable, able to connect to access points and power them directly from a controller without the need of an external switch. So if you had an environment need where PoE on the device was necessary, that's something to take into consideration, whereas the 9800L, none of the interfaces are PoE based, so it does require a network switch to be present in that network configuration. Next in our series, we're going to take a look at the 9100 series access points that also came uh, as part of this catalyst solution for wireless. First up here, we do have the 9115 series wireless access point. This thing is much slimmer and um, size-wise uh, smaller than prior generation models. It also does have your two interfaces, one for 2.5 gigabit per second link, multi-gigabit to your network, and then one console interface as well. The nice thing with these access points, because they are a little slimmer and sleeker, uh, they do blend well with an uh, installation on your ceiling or in an environment uh, with the built-in antennas on the 9115. Uh, and being that this is a Wi-Fi 6 uh, capable access point, it definitely adds not only better horsepower and functionality, but a great aesthetics to your environment as well. If we take a look at the 9120 series catalyst series controller, uh, this one is a little bit bigger by comparison. So if we do look at these kind of side by side, you can see the 9120 is a little bit uh, larger in size and also a little bit thicker as well, but not by much. 
Um, so when you're thinking of installation space, where you want to put these guys, uh, there's very little difference between the 9120 and 9115 as it relates to their size and aesthetics across the board. On the back, you do have the two interfaces as well, a console interface and a multi-gigabit interface as well. Uh, this one does also run 2.5 gigabit per second, uh, same as the 9115, as your multi-gigabit interface on top of this guy. By comparison, uh, the 9120 is a little bit heavier than the 9115, but not by much. And if we just stack them together, you can see that their um, size comparison is very familiar or very similar uh, to each other when we look at these uh, kind of back to back there. The main difference you get with the 9120, uh, it does have the same Wi-Fi 6 capabilities, but now you get into the ability for the Cisco RF ASIC, their proprietary chipset, will first be found in the 9120 series controller that would not be found in the 9115. So while you can't see it inside the enclosure, there is a newer chipset um, that will help run some RF detection off loading that from the actual uh, client serving access point channels as well. Um, so that's a nice feature you get with this and that'll help compensate for a little bit of the size comparison there. Now, like we did for the 9800 controller, comparing it to its prior generation, uh, let's take a look at the 9115 in comparison to the 1851. Uh, this model here is going to give us that uh, AeroS solution, something we've had from Cisco in the X800 generation. And by comparison, we can see that they are a little bit different. The 9115 is a little bit more rounded compared to this one being a more square style. Uh, the 9115 is going to be a smaller size footprint, again, that aesthetically pleasing installation. And if you look at the uh, size of the devices, you can see that they are going to be a little bit slimmer in the 9115 compared to the 1850 series access point. Um, so with that, you do have those different considerations when looking at replacing your access points. Uh, what is the size difference going to be? This does a decent job to showcase that type of comparison. The nice thing is, with the Cisco access points, the mounting hardware for the prior generation will still be supported in the new generation catalyst as well. So even though it's a smaller footprint in design, it will still support the same installation hardware when you go and replace the access points in your solution. You don't have to put up new um, hardware installation at the same time if you're keeping it in that same location. If we then look at the 9120, that would compare to the 2800 series access point. And that's where the generation would really ramp up here. With these two, they're very similar in size. Again, more rounded in the uh, 9120 to a little more square in the 2800 series. But the square size, you know, they're very similar in, in size capacity. And you can notice that the 9120 is a little bit slimmer when it comes to installation depth as well. So not only do you see that when you get the 9100 series catalyst access points as the uh, portfolio does continue to evolve, we're getting more horsepower, more feature, more functionality with the new generation Wi-Fi 6 access points, but in a smaller, slimmer, sleeker package at the same time. So we've got some great benefits with the catalyst access points, and we've got some great benefits with the catalyst 9800 series wireless controller as well. I'm Dan Stewart. Thanks for watching.